This is the story of Chinese food, but not the Chinese food you're used to. It's not about sesame chicken, beef with broccoli, or anything like that. It's about an authentic regional Chinese food and a young chef who's trying to make it an everyday food for Americans. It's 10 a.m. and we're on the way to meet up with Amelie Kang, one of the hottest new restaurateurs in New York. Hi. Hi. This is Amelie, an immigrant from Tangshan, China. She's only in her mid-20s, but already owns three Chinese restaurants that are changing what New Yorkers call Chinese food. Our first impression of the apartment? Classic New York. Amelie is building a restaurant empire and living in a tiny shared apartment. So how many people live here? We have uh, four, me and my husband, and a friend Peter, and his girlfriend. Growing up, her parents cooked simple Chinese dishes, while her grandma whipped up fantastical stir-fries. Coming to New York, a city with a larger Chinese population than any city outside of Asia, she expected to be able to easily find these and other comfort foods. But she couldn't. So she had to import some things, like this Chinese medicine. This is made of the skin of a donkey. How do you say cheers in Chinese? Gambe. Gambe. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And for the things she couldn't import, she had to make them herself. Today we're getting a behind the scenes peek inside her burgeoning Chinese food empire. Welcome to tomorrow. Oh, it smells so good in here. Tomorrow is one of three restaurants Amelie owns in New York City. Cuisine is very, uh, it's like home cooking style Chinese food and we feature a lot of things that you don't necessarily get from Chinese restaurants here. So things that I used to have at a school cafeteria and we call it Shi Tang. This food has been overlooked by restaurants because of its home style simplicity. But Amelie missed this food and figured other people would too. She was right. For Chinese customers, this is a taste of home. People say, oh, this is just like Shi uh, which is the dining hall. And for non-Chinese customers, it's a taste of someone else's. A lot of people say, oh, this is, this is actual Chinese food. And I'm like, yeah, it's actual Chinese food. It's a very simple egg fried rice with Chinese bacon, fish filet with ginger and scallion, figure in chili oil, pork and mushroom. And although she's excited this food is new to some people, she doesn't want the food to be an experience. To some people it's an experience, but it shouldn't be. It, it should be a, a utility. She wants it to be an everyday food. It definitely reminds me of the time living in China. My mom didn't cook that much, so she would cook me really simple food. There's some inspiration from her. This is my favorite. Delicious. It's like the Chinese food that you don't fall asleep at your desk after that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I can still make edit this video after I eat this meal, which is a great thing. <laughs> Her goal is to have this more traditional Chinese food be as normal as the American Chinese food we're used to. And nothing is doing more to achieve that goal for her than her first restaurant, the Mala Project. Where are next? So we're going to Mala Project, uh, East Village. East Village location. Should we finish these videos first? Yeah. Okay. Come Come the Mala Project was Amelie's first restaurant, and it quickly took off, putting Amelie on the map as a young chef to watch in New York. It is the first full-service restaurant in New York to serve Mala dry pots. When we arrive, the restaurant's closed, and the staff is having their daily meeting but it's about to get crazy. It's almost five. Oh, it's 4.57, so in three minutes, the restaurant opens for dinner. People are gonna start flooding in. As soon as the restaurant opens, the seamless orders start coming in, customers start showing up, and the chef gets to work. The mala dry pot is a Sichuan dish invented relatively recently in China. The term mala comes from combining the Chinese characters for numbing and spicy, because, well, the sauce is numbing and spicy. The idea behind the mala dry pot is to order whatever you want from a list of about 70 ingredients, including things like steak, chicken wings, chicken heart, octopus, lotus root, enoki mushroom, and of course, rooster testicle. Um, it, yeah, they, they actually do. And then they cook it all together with their secret mala sauce. Mala sauce, the essence of the mala dry pot. We take 24 different spices, including some Chinese medicines that I don't even have a name for. It's a process of more than 60 hour long, of still cooking and simmering and grinding. Flames are flying, the food is moving fast. These guys mean business. This is something that I used to eat uh, back home with my family at least once a week. So we decided to bring that to New York. We're the first mala dry pot focused restaurant. And people are loving it so much that she opened a second mala project in Midtown Manhattan. 
She's growing so fast that demand far exceeds the number of seats she has, so food delivery services like Seamless allow hundreds of other people to eat mala dry pots from their homes. With so much demand, Amelie's planning to open two new tomorrows in 2019 and start scouting for her third mala project. When restaurants have items like pig ears, chicken hearts, and rooster testicles, it's easy to exoticize the food and make it into something strange and foreign, an experience more than a meal. Amelie is part of a new generation of young Chinese chefs working against that tendency. Mm, that's really good. Her goal is to turn the traditional regional Chinese food from her hometown into an everyday staple for a broad American audience. And if the success of her first three restaurants and her plans for 2019 are any indication, that audience is ready to eat. So good. I'm Amelie, this is Mala Project. Right on!